so Slovenian history painting has a relatively short history of its own. Uh, with the first important commissions realized in the late 1930s, the genre is actually among the less developed in Slovenian art. It reached its pinnacle in the first two post-war decades, when the country was part of socialist Yugoslavia, and its political regime used monumental history painting as a means of self legitimization The rebuilding of the new state resulted in several new and renewed representational buildings, which were decorated with monumental, often uh, history paintings. Now, most of these were created by uh, painter Okay, I just need to figure this out. Shouldn't be that difficult. Okay, uh, most of these were created by painter Slavko Pengal, who quickly established himself as the first choice for the highest state commissions. Uh, his works could be seen uh, in President Josip Broz Tito's uh, official summer residence on Lake Bled, in the Central Committee of the League of Communists in Belgrade and in the National Assembly in Ljubljana, among others. Not much is known about the background of most of these commissions, as relevant documents are either missing or unavailable, and research of them is still ongoing. What has been established so far is that the works were conceived under close supervision of state authorities. An expert commission was used at least in one case, the case of the National Assembly, but it was used only as an advisory body with all final decisions made by the representatives of the state. Expert opinion was considered particularly uh, regarding questions of style and composition, while decisions regarding all, all important issues were made by the main supervisor of the commissions, Minister for Construction, Ivan Maciek Matija, who had the exclusive right to decide whether the works were appropriate or not. Now, these frescoes as a whole strongly re reflect the contemporary political views and affairs of the state they were commissioned to promote. With regards to expressing geopolitical claims, two of Pengo's artworks are particularly uh, interesting, specifically as they address the question of the contested state border with Italy. The first is located in the town hall in Nova Gorica, which was a town located right on the said border. And the second one is in the National Assembly in Slovenia's capital, Ljubljana. Well, before we examine these frescoes, uh, a brief overview of Slovenia's history and the question of its border is probably needed. Uh, in the past, Slovenia was uh, a part of several multinational states. It was part of the Socialist Federative Republic of Yugoslavia, which was, of course, as you know, a federation governed by the League of Communists and made up of six socialist republics. Its territory corresponded to that of present-day Slovenia, which you can see in the top left corner. Uh, the Slovene National Movement, however, formed much earlier, while Slovenes were still under the Habsburg rule. Uh, it grew stronger. Uh, and for, uh, and culminated for the first time in the political program called United Slovenia, which emerged within the broader context of the springtime of the nations in 1848. It demanded an autonomous United Slovenia, which would unify all the Slovene inhabited lands, uh, or all the Slovene inhabited areas, uh, should be said. And this is a claim which remained current for more than a century, as it became one of the preconditions of the national liberation movement at the beginning of World War II. The, the idea of integration with other South Slavs first became prominent already after the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, when it partly materialized with the formation of first the state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs, and later the kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. Within these states, roughly a third of all Slovenes still remained outside its borders, either in Italy, Austria or Hungary. Now, the Western border with Italy, which will be of central interest for this lecture, also underwent, underwent several changes throughout the 20th century. In 1920, in the aftermath of World War I, a third of Slovenian ethnic territory was allocated to the Kingdom of Italy in accordance with the Treaty of Rapallo. And you can see the, the border demarked here. Uh, over the next two decades, the Slovenian and also Croatian minorities who were now living in Italy's Venezia Giulia region 
became severely oppressed by the fascist regime to the point that they seemingly disappeared from public life. Uh, an opportunity to repair and improve the situation came with the National Liberation Movement during World War II. The decisive step towards inclusion of all Slovene inhabited territory into a single entity occurred on May 1st, 1945, when units of Slovene 9th Corps and the Yugoslav 4th Army marched into the city of Trieste, you can see here, uh, the town of Gorizia, and to the Izonzo River nearby. All these were localities Slovenia and Yugoslavia wanted to make part of the new uh, republic. They were followed, so the Slovenian partisans, uh, the Yugoslav partisans, were followed a day later by the British Eighth Army. And soon after, as you know, the Western Allies began exerting pressure on, pressure on Yugoslavia to retreat from Trieste in particular. After years of negotiations over the contested territory, the question of the border was partially solved in 1947. The Istria Peninsula, which is today in Croatia, uh, was given to Yugoslavia, while the northern part, including the town of Gorizia, uh, was given to uh, uh, Italy. Uh, no final agreement had yet been reached with regards to the strategically important seaport of Trieste. The temporary solution was to establish the independent free territory of Trieste under direct responsibility of the United Nations. It was divided into two areas, zone A, which included the city, was under the supervision of Anglo-American allies, and Zone B was under Yugoslav administration. Uh, you can see a map of this in the top right corner. With the fate of the city still uncertain, tensions between the Italian and the Yugoslav side grew increasingly strained, strained, strained <laughs> until the signing of the London Memorandum in 1954, when Trieste and its surroundings were finally given to Italy. In both Trieste and Gorizia, so the two uh, most problematic uh, towns or cities, the Slovenians represented a minority, but were the majority among the population of its surrounding areas. Uh, both also played an important part in Slovenian history, culture, and development of national awareness, which is why their loss strongly affected the Slovenian people. This fact is also demonstrated by the two frescoes we will focus on in the remainder of this lecture. Now, in 1952, uh, Slavko Pengo completed his fresco painting History of Primorska Region for the municipal building in Nova Gorica. Nova Gorica, if you translate it into English, means New Gorizia. Uh, the town was founded directly on the new border with Italy and Yugoslavia, which was established in 47, and it was meant to replace the loss of the nearby historic town of Gorizia, which was the former administrative economic and cultural center of this predominantly Slovenian region, region of the Izonzo and Vipava valleys. And this region now needed a new hub. The town was therefore planned as a kind of a bastion of socialism on the state westernmost border. And the municipal building was supposed to be its most important architectural uh, focal point. Now on the fresco, uh, prominence, oh, I can stay here for just a while. Prominence is given to the recent history of the 20th century, particularly to Italian fascism and the National Liberation War, with only a few events from older history, history included, either those related to development of Slovene culture in the region or local mass movements. The narrative is, is organized around four monumental figures, uh, which rise above uh, the events from the region's past. The first is Primo Strubar, the Protestant reformer considered to, considered to be the father of Slovenian language. The scenes surrounding him attest to the long-term presence and importance of Slovenian culture in the region of Primorska. This is further emphasized by scenes on the adjacent wall, depicting the period of the national revival in the second half of the 19th century with portraits of uh, important uh, local artists. Now, the only other images from older pre 20th century history of the region depict the Tolmin peasant uprising of 1713, which was the last and most forceful peasant revolt on Slovenian territory. It is depicted under the old Gorizia castle, uh, clearly locating the events to the already lost town and thus emphasizing its importance for the history of Slovenians. 
uh, the Communist Party and the official historiography considered the revolt as the only historical events that could compare to the People's Liberation Movement during World War II due to the endurance and the courage demonstrated by uh, the peasants, so they said. Now, interestingly enough, uh, in reference to uh, the lecture we had yesterday uh, by Jasper, they were also depicted on uh, a series of stamps. Uh, the uprisings were also an important event in constructing the cult of Josip Broz Tito. His main office in Belgrade had the famous painting of the Battle of Stubice, the one on the left, uh, a revolt, uh, the, uh, the painting hanging above the desk. Uh, so that it framed and symbolically equated Tito to the leader of the great Croat Slovenian peasant revolt, a revolt, Matija Gubec. Moving on, the large image of death on a raging skeletal horse unites the scenes depicting the fascist oppression and destruction of Slovene culture under Italian rule in 1920s and 1930s. Here, Pengo referenced Christian iconography. Uh, he was, interestingly enough, before the war, predominantly a church painter. Uh, and in this way, he made his apocalyptic horseman a personification of fascist evil raging against the Slovenian minority in Venezia Giulia. And the toppled bust, if we, yeah, moving a bit closer, the toppled bust uh, evokes numerous Slovenian monuments destroyed in the area by the fascists, while the fire, which you saw in the background, and you see again a detail here, represents the fascist arson of the Trieste National Hall in 1920. Now, the National Hall housed Slovene organizations and was a symbol of Slovene culture, political, and economic presence in Trieste, uh, which was steadily increasing throughout the 20, in the, in the early 20th century. Further on, uh, Pengo depict, depicted the bodies of four, uh, of four young anti-fascists, members of the illegal organization of Slovenian and Croatian youth, which was later renamed TIGR, which was an acronym for Trieste, Istria, Gorica, Reka, all locations which Slovenes and Croats considered their national ter uh, territory. Uh, these four youths were sentenced to death uh, by the Trieste Special Court for state security and executed near the village of Bazovica in September of 1930. Uh, after World War II, all of these events, but particularly the arson of the National Hall, were regularly used as proof of past injustice and as an argument for Trieste to become part of the Yugoslav territory. And this is quite clearly also the case here, as at the time the fresco was being painted, its fate had not yet been agreed upon. Uh, in accordance with the significance uh, the Communist Party attributed to the National Liberation Movement during World War II, the scenes representing these events are given the most attention and cover uh, almost half of the entire fresco surface. They're introduced by a large figure of a, triumphal, a, tri a triumphant rebel, uh, seen here, casting a red shadow onto the events he precedes. His shadow, interestingly enough, emerges from the blood of the Bazovica victims, uh, connecting in this way the pre-Second World War anti-fascist activity with the role of the communists for the people's liberation, which is another concept that was very frequently addressed in public discourse and also in art. Now, the fourth focal point of the fresco is the depiction, the depiction of Josip Broz Tito, portrayed at the podium, addressing the members of the second convention of the Anti-Fascist Council for the National Liberation in Yugoslavia, uh, which took place in Jajce, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, in 1943. The session elected a provisional government, proclaimed Tito as Marshal of Yugoslavia, and adopted plans to reorganize Yugoslavia into a federation of republics after the war. In addition, the council also decided that the entire territory of Primorska, including Trieste and Gorizia, must be awarded to the new Yugoslav state, making this detail yet another claim to resolve the pressing question of the border in Yugoslavia's favor. And this assertion is further emphasized by uh, the very final historical 
see a historical scene of the fresco, which depicts the liberation of Gorizia by Slovenian partisans on May 1st, 1945, and the manifestations that followed. And the visualized history of the region therefore ends at a point where the border between Italy and Yugoslavia had not yet been determined, Gorizia had not yet been lost, and the Slovenia Nova Gorica did not yet exist. Now, seven years later, uh, or uh, six years later, uh, in 1958, Slavko Pengov finished painting his most ambitious commission, which is also the largest historical painting in Slovenian history of art to date. Based on his previous successes in Villa Bled and in Nova Gorica, he was selected to paint a large fresco for the newly built National Assembly in Ljubljana, depicting the history of Slovenes, very ambitiously, from their settlement to the present. The approximately 70 meter long Freeze covers the walls of the lobby in front of the main hall of the assembly, which was one of the most important representative spaces in the former republic. Like in Nova Gorica, the history represented here is conceived in accordance with the new official state historiography. The main focus is again given to depictions of the recent history, particularly the national liberation movement, which is portrayed as the development which enabled the historically oppressed Slovene nation to finally break free and take control of its destiny. The Slovenes in general are depicted as a unified, undifferentiated mass moving towards a common goal. Very few political figures are included, and important historical events are depicted from the perspective of the effect they had in, uh, for the people. The national aspect is, again, emphasized by focusing on subject matter referring to Slovenian culture, while unlike in Nova Gorica, scenes referring to the territory which was now already lost to Italy are almost entirely omitted, seemingly to not rub salt into the wound, which was still sore from the recent loss uh, at the time these frescoes were being painted in 1958. Now, nevertheless, a depiction of the liberation of Trieste was selected as one of the final scenes of the historical sequence and was allocated one of the more prominent spots on the fresco frieze. The decision, interestingly enough, was made at the last minute and without any explanation recorded in the existing documents of which there are uh, plenty. Uh, a partisan carrying the Slovenian flag is seen, taking off, is seen taking off his uniform and moving towards a group of six dancing females personifying the six republics of Yugoslavia. He's framed by the famous Piazza Unità d'Italia in Trieste in the background, whoops, sorry, <laughs> uh, here, with the Yugoslav tank next to it, the Bay of Trieste, and his uh, Slovenian flag is raised above the Duino castle. Now together, these three landmarks symbolize all of the Slovenian ethnic territory that had already been lost. So the city, its surroundings, and the sea. Now, until 1954, when the fate of the city and its immediate surroundings was still uncertain, Trieste had been the subject of intense propaganda activities to influence domestic and international public, as public opinion was used as a means of exerting pressure on the Western allies. Its image frequently appeared in art, particularly in film. The fresco, however, was created later when the borders between the East and West had already been firmly set. The main aim of the image, therefore, was to state an important historical victory uh, without hoping to influence future decisions like in Nova Gorica. The image does not call to action in any way, even though it relies heavily on Delacroix's uh, victory leading the nation, the figure of the partisan has lost virtually all revolutionary connotation. By choosing to paint the Slovene flag only, the contribution of all Yugoslav nations participating in the liberation of the city is somewhat ignored to emphasize the Slovene merit, a decision which can be understood due to the meaning the city had for the nation. Now, despite this, the image can also be perceived as a visualization of Slovene dissatisfaction with the way Yugoslavia dealt with the question of the loss of Trieste after the war. Now, when the decision on Trieste's annexation to Italy was reached with the London Memorandum of 1954, Yugoslavia's official stand on the territorial division was positive, describing it as an important diplomatic achievement. 
Meanwhile, the Yugoslav authorities presented the outcome to the domestic public as a forced and above all, only a temporary solution as this explanation, uh, explanation was more acceptable after years of intense propaganda regarding the city's significance. Uh, the Slovenian public in particular saw the situation as Yugoslavia's betrayal of Slovenes, as the loss of Trieste meant a final defeat after decades of struggles to preserve the territory. An interesting detail referring to this sentiment can also be noticed in the group of personifications of the Republics of Yugoslavia, which follows the, the depiction of the victorious partisan. The personification of Slovenia, this one, uh, is depicted in the center between Serbia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Unlike other figures who are depicted in happy, lighthearted interaction, she is portrayed looking somewhat to the side with her expression slightly reserved, full of melancholy and kind of lost in thought. And this is a detail which could be interpreted as a demonstration of Slovenia's isolation within, within the common state. And the late 1950s were a period of growing tensions between centralist and decentralist tendencies and stronger appeals for a greater autonomy of the individual republics. In 1958, some of the highest Slovenian politicians first publicly, publicly opposed the Yugoslav premise that the Slovene national problem had been solved with the revolution and by joining the Yugoslav Federation. The same year also brought about the first Yugoslav worker strike and a minor strike in Slovenia, both of which brought attention to the anti-Yugoslav sentiment and to the general feeling of being neglected as a nation by the Federation. Now, all of this came precisely at the time the National Assembly fresco was being painted. The last minute decision that it should include a representation of the liberation of Trieste can therefore also be perceived as a rare artistic manifestation of Slovenian disagreement with the official position of Belgrade and a criticism of central, uh, centralist tendencies in the politics of Yugoslavia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Katarina. We still have about six minutes for questions and comments. Okay. Uh, please, uh, colleagues, uh, пожалуйста, у кого есть вопросы, uh, пишите в uh, chat или я не вижу катерина can i ask you to switch off the uh, the screen demonstration i need yeah thank you because okay so far i don't see the audience may i actually ask the question what is the fate of those uh frescoes in the post yugoslavian period are they still kept uh, are they used in the i don't i don't know patriotic education or mm -hmm. Was it, do they reconsider it uh, somehow? What is the fate of, of those uh, pictures now? Thanks. Uh, actually, it's kind of a difficult question, but probably the easiest answer would be to say that they are more or less ignored. Uh, they are still, like, the one in the National Assembly is still in, the National Assembly is today the parliament. So it's still there, but it was, for example, very poorly or, well, poorly is probably not the right word. Um, badly restored with a part of it removed and things like that. The one in Villa Blade, for example, which is now a hotel, um, uh, was for some period closed with curtains, the fresco, so that the guests would not be offended by uh, by the images and so on. Uh, the one in the League of, uh, in the uh, painted for the League of Communists in Bel Belgrade is lost. We don't know where it is. Apparently, it's behind some panels uh, hidden in the same building it it once was. So it's a very um, sad, uh, sad fate. Okay, yeah, thank you. So, uh, please, uh, other questions? Uh, еще вопросы, коллеги? Uh, I do not seek. Uh, в... в зале есть кто-то, кто бы хотел вопрос задать? Sorry, I don't, I don't see any, any questions. So, Katarina, thank you very much. It was interesting. I would probably I do have another question if I have two, two minutes as a continuation. Yeah. Uh, what is, um, uh, is there anything like uh, this type of patriotic uh, painting in the contemporary Slovenia? I mean, can you compare uh, this wave of, uh, I would say, 
uh, historical and patriotic uh, writing to anything in the contemporary Yugoslavia, or it's just an uh, absent, uh, it is, is it absent in, in, from the contemporary vision? Uh, or I put it a different way. Is there anything in contemporary Yugoslavia that uh, deals with the past in the artistic ways? Is it anything like monuments or frescoes in contemporary one? Eh? Uh, I mean, there are, yes, there are some, but which deal with the past in a completely different way. So instead of affirming it, as was in the case of Pengo, they go completely against it or question uh, the different regimes and so on. Like the most famous group probably is Neue Slovenische Kunst and Leibach and so on. So this is all... Um, a large uh, group, uh, art collective which sort of deals with precisely what 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 you ask. But as far as this sort of affirmation of the past goes, none of the more the painters, the, the artists I know deal deal with with this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Katarina. Uh, if you can, есть кто-нибудь еще в зале, кто бы хотел задать вопрос последний раз, спрашиваю, потому что так, не, не вижу, да. Окей, okay. спасибо большое. Thank you very much. I вопрос think... в чате есть. А, есть, чате. да. Я, извините, появился, да, в чате. Окей, okay, I see. Uh, Isabel, you can switch on your mic and ask you aloud if you... No. I see. Are there any movies made about those events? Um, some, yes, some, some, some have been made in 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 the past years, but again, not not that many. Um, it's it's not really a topic. I know that some exist, but it, I don't really know enough about them to sort of to give you a, a right answer. So I will. I think it's best if I sort of step back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure.